And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Escape from the Hidden Castle board game. Now this is actually a reprint of an older game, and in fact it's a different theme if you get the European version. The American version is called Escape from the Hidden Castle. Um, there's uh, multiple names, and one you're escaping from a ghost called Hugo. Um, in this game, this game is marketed towards kids, although I saw, hey, adults can play it too. But it looked kind of like a kid's game to me, so that's how I'm taking this review. But I noticed it's designed by Wolfgang Kramer, who's one of the greatest board game designers to ever grace this planet. Just a fantastic person. So the theme seems kind of interesting. The designer is fantastic. Let's take a look. In this game, a phantom is here in the dungeon at the very bottom, and players are going to be placing their pieces around the outside of the board. The fewer the player count, the more pieces that you have. And the game is going to be pretty simple. On your turn, you're going to roll the die. If you roll a number, you'll pick one of your pieces and move that many spaces around the board. It is possible, if you want to, to go into a room, but these rooms won't be available until the phantom comes out. Whenever you roll the phantom, instead of moving one of your pieces, you'll move the phantom three spaces. Although, every time the phantom swings around the board, he'll be, this piece will move on this clock track, so he'll eventually start moving four, five, six, and then seven spaces at a time. When the phantom moves, if he passes over people, you pick them up like this, and they're going to go into the dungeon. And they go on the highest numbered space available at that point in time. So if the 10's there, they go on a 9, and you score that many points. You uh, players, when they move pieces, can move and try to get out of the dungeon if they want to. Again, you can move into these rooms. These rooms will actually make you lose 3 points when you move into them, which is a good thing. But you have to land in them by exact count. Most of the other rooms, you can land in them just by moving in there. If someone else is in a room, only one person per room, you can kick them out. But you have to, again, land there by exact count. That's it. The game will continue to go till one player gets to 46 points, which ends the game, or until the Phantom is captured everybody, which happens when this piece gets to the last clock. I guess the midnight strikes and the person with the lowest score is, is escapes. You got out of the dungeon, and then um, that's better than shit. If you have the lowest possible score, you're the winner. I gotta say, I'm not happy with the components for this game. You saw the Phantom fell apart here. The Phantom is a bunch of cardboard pieces put here, and I haven't played the game that much. And I thought, you know, it's kind of neat that, you know, you have this thing, but it's cardboard. So because it's cardboard, it, I don't know, this just doesn't work very well. These pieces are okay. They show silhouettes of people, and I thought it was really weird that each of the colors of this game show all the various different types of, you know, different kinds of people running. Why not make all of one color also all one person? That way you can tell the difference between red and green easily if all the red were tall people and all the green wore baseball caps, etc. I thought that was an odd choice. They're in standees. The whole thing is kind of eh. This game originally came out as a with a ghost, a plastic ghost chasing people, and I think that's kind of a cooler theme. As it is, this looks and feels very mundane. This one's a huge miss for us. Uh, you know, I went online and I looked at people. There's a lot of positive reviews, and I guess this just hits a chord for a lot of people, but it just didn't for us and me and my family. The, the game is just random. Now, you can say, well, there's ways to mitigate that randomness. Sure, you roll a die and you pick which of your pieces to move. That's the that's the choice. Now, there are other games that do that, and there are other games that do that, and I don't even hate those games. But in this particular one, the biggest problem is you can roll the bad guy, the phantom, and then you don't get to do anything, and then it comes back to you, and you can roll the phantom again. And especially in larger count games, eight or seven, I'll flat out say that no matter what my rating is for this game at the end, for seven or eight players, it's a two. That's how bad it is because you can literally 
play once, twice, or not at all, have all your people captured. And that's just not fun at all. You know, the, you, you, you roll, you get the phantom, other people roll the phantom moves, captures your people, by the time it comes back to you, you roll the phantom again. You, it, I mean, it's not that it's impossible to roll the phantom multiple times on the die, since it's on two of the sides of the dice. So that being the case, you, it's very possible to roll it multiple turns in a row. It's not like it's some weird mathematical thing. It's a very possible thing. And that person won't have fun. And in the games I played with my kids, one kid was frustrated almost every game. There was one kid frustrated because I didn't get to do anything. I just kept getting caught by the ghost. What am I supposed to say to that other than, yeah, you're right. Let's play a game where you actually get to make some choices. And then the components in this game aren't that fantastic either. So that combination, it just doesn't really work. I mean, there's like interesting ideas, but at the end of the day, this feels like an old game. And I don't know if it says here when the game first came out. This one is, this version's from 2018, um, but it just, I can't really recommend it. And, and, I'm, and I'm laying aside the whole adult thing for kids themselves. My kids were frustrated by playing this game because they wanted there to be more choices and it just didn't seem interesting and the whole game was trying not to get caught and have bad things happen to you, you know, getting points. Um, the whole running from somebody trying to chase you can be a spooky, fun, exhilarating feeling, especially for kids. But in this one, it just came down to rolling this die. That's the whole point of the game. And I don't think that's something that my kids and me enjoy at all at this point. Dice Tower Judgment, too random.